Okay, yeah, I think we're live now. Cool. Let me just double check that's gone right. Cool, yeah, so they can just see a Queen Mary logo at the moment. Is, and that's what you can see, everyone? Cool, yeah. perfect. And I can hear myself, which is great. <laughs> Let's turn that off. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> so, hey guys, uh, we're just about to start. Uh, welcome to the live stream uh, for our English. Um, and uh, we're just about to start. Let me know if my slides, I should be talking about what's in the slides. So if the slides aren't showing, let me know guys. And I'm counting on my panel to help me with this one. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, Okay, I think everyone should be with us now, hopefully, and we'll just start. If people join throughout, um, welcome and thanks for coming uh, this afternoon and spending your time with us. Um, we'll be introducing our panel shortly. I'll introduce my co-host, uh, Natalie, who will um, be taking over in terms of questions and lots of other things. Um, but for now, uh, welcome. Welcome to Queen Mary University of London for our open day. Um, obviously, this is happening online, so we understand there'll be like connection things and there might be uh, sound problems. Um, for this one, so just um, we will be sending out a recording afterwards to try and um, make sure uh, that you get all of the content that you need. So just keep an eye on your inbox for that. Um, I just thought I'd just start with um, some of the books from some of our um, staff members. So we, uh, so we're talking about English in this session. So we're talking about um, our English department, which is based in Mile End in London, which is kind of zone two on the central line, kind of easy to get around London. Um, and these are some of the staff who work at Queen Mary um, who are writing amazing books about kind of loads of different topics. So if you can have a look through that um, big old screen of them, you can see it's from very popular fiction through to Tudor England, through to uh, how the kind of um, Islamic world affects um, things like Shakespeare and the Elizabethan world. It's, there's lots of interesting stuff going on. There's a, something about comedy from Hugh Marsh, which is quite a recent one, um, and lots of stuff around post-colonial um, studies as well. Um, these are some of the things that people like about Queen Mary. Um, so studying here about inclusive kind of environment um, that you kind of get given a bit of freedom to, to um, be independent and think yourself. Uh, that you're going to have friendly staff, which hopefully you'll meet some of them in, uh, when we introduce our panel. Uh, but we've got loads of cool partners. So we have uh, a magazine based um, at Queen Mary called Was A Theory, which is a, a magazine, like a really leading magazine in global literature. So there's loads of interesting stuff happening on campus and around. We also have a um, support team who really want to help you get through your studies and, and make sure that you can like do, do the best that you can throughout. So these are some of the things people like about us. Um, people always ask us about careers, and maybe our alumni who are on the panel. We've got one, we've got uh, Lucy from our alumni panel, um, who can maybe talk a bit about afterwards. She's quite a recent graduate, so she'll be able to tell you with a really fresh experience uh, what's going on. So these are the kinds of areas that people get into. So things like publishing, TV and radio, teaching is really popular. Um, and a lot of people think that um, English isn't sort of a pathway to a career, but I would definitely say that, um, challenge that, and also say that, um, that it can open up loads more kind of avenues for you than if you go down one very specific pathway. And I think lots of people end up coming out of, um, coming out of Queen Mary doing lots of really interesting, exciting things that are based on your kind of own interests rather than trying to sort of pigeonhole you as like a lawyer or a teacher or a police person or whatever kind of career you want to go down. Um, these are the programmes we offer. So um, we have six main ones within the English, um, uh, within the English department, including English with Creative Writing, which has a really strong team. Um, no one's here today from that, but actually um, we'll be doing a follow-up session on English with Creative Writing. So um, do keep an eye out for, um, for any um, information about that. Um, we've also got some joint courses that are really popular, like English and Drama and English and History are probably the most popular ones. Um, and then also, if you're interested in film or linguistics, we have programs that combine English with those. Um, and, oh, this says taste session tomorrow, which is really helpful. Mm -hmm. But um, but it is actually today. 
So we have a taster session, uh, which is happening today at 4 p.m. Uh, this slide, I think, is from my presentation yesterday when this was originally scheduled. But please do come along. Um, it's bit.ly slash QMUL English Taster. Uh, so you can uh, sign up there and get the link to join as well. Uh, and I think that's it. Um, I think I'll pass over to, uh, to Natalie now. Cool. So yeah, I just need to stop my screen sharing. Cool. So if everyone um, who's on the call can have their uh, view on gallery mode, I'll pass over to Natalie now. Hi everyone, I'm Natalie Gray and I'm the Alumni Engagement Coordinator for the School of Humanities and Social Sciences. Um, I'm also an English alumna and I graduated from Queen Mary in 2013 with an English degree. Um, Peter, who I will introduce next, was one of my lecturers. So Peter, do you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> Yes. Hello, everyone. Um, I was also taught Lucy, um, who you'll meet um, soon. So um, that is, it's very nice for me to be back here. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Peter. Um, I've taught at Queen Mary since uh, 2008. And before that, I was at Nottingham University. And before that, I was at Cambridge. And I have to say that Queen Mary is my favourite um, of all of the universities that I've taught at. Um, if I could... Um, if, if I could have my own slogan for the university, it would be really smart, but not up itself. Um, inexplicably, marketing think this is not a very good slogan, but it's actually the truth. It's, it's a good place to work. Thanks, Peter. And Molly, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. So I'm Molly McDonald, um, a lecturer in literary theory in the department. Um, and I actually came to Queen Mary in 2004 to do my PhD. And I've, I've never left. So I've made my way from being a PhD student to being a, um, a permanent member of staff. And so I, I don't have experience teaching anywhere else, but I know that I don't want to be anywhere else. So, um, and now with Peter uh, co-directing admissions, um, which is also a really wonderful part of, of, of the job, so. Thanks, Molly. It's really lovely to hear how much you both love Queen Mary and how long you've been here as well. Um, I'm just going to move on to introduce our alumni speakers. So we have Lucy Safronihu, who graduated in 2018. Do you want to introduce yourself, Lucy? Hello. Um, yep, so as Natalie said, I um, graduated in 2018. Uh, since then, I've worked in publishing, uh, which has been very exciting, and I've learned quite a lot. And as uh, well, Peter and Molly were both my teachers uh, mm -hmm. in, in the courses. And actually, Molly's course is what led me on to do my master's at UCL, which is in uh, psychoanalysis. So mm -hmm. um, I loved my three years at Queen Mary. It was just just really lovely to be there. The atmosphere, as you you know, I think you can get a certain feeling from places when you go there. And and the feeling that I got at Queen Mary was just went all the way through and even up until graduation I, I didn't really want to leave <laughs> but I had to um but yeah so thankful to Mary for that. Thank you Lucy I can really relate to that feeling of not wanting to leave Queen Mary as well and now I'm back as a staff <laughs> member <laughs> mm -hmm. so um we also have Sabiha. Sabiha would you like to introduce yourself? Hi I'm Sabiha and I graduated from Queen Mary in 2019 so last year um I did full on English, but I also, whilst at Queen Mary, I took the opportunity to go study abroad in our partner university in Seoul. But I would say that with Queen Mary, because originally I was supposed to go to King's, but I was thinking Queen Mary, because Queen Mary is really diverse. The atmosphere is just amazing. And I'll say student satisfaction is really good. You live the full on student life in Queen Mary. And even though I didn't want to leave, I still want to go back. So mm -hmm. who knows? <laughs> it's nice to welcome you back today for this session. Thank you, Sabiha. Thank you. And we also have Leda, who is a current English student. Do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Leda, and I've just finished my second year as an English student at, at Queen Mary. Um, I'm Italian, and I, I decided to um, come to study in London at Queen Mary because I've, I'm really passionate about um, English language and literature. And I thought that the best way to uh, learn, learn those was to actually move to the UK. And I've, I've really, I haven't regretted it. And I, I love Queen Mary. I've, um, I love the course, the modules, and I'm really excited about my, my final year and about the dissertation. Thank you very much. So that's everybody on our panel. Um, I'm just gonna move on to some questions now. So I'll start with you, Lucy. 
Um, can you talk about some of your highlights of your degree at Queen Mary? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, great question. I think well, when I was thinking about this beforehand, I think it was just the variety that was available. So in my second year, for example, on the one hand, I was studying modernism. And then on the other hand, Dickens and the city. <laughs> so it was, it was great to have, you know, a great contrast between things and to have that freedom to choose uh, subjects that you might not usually come across, themes that you might not usually come across and things that are quite interlinked. And I think the, the department does a great job in combining those things. And, you know, there are, whether you're interested in music and literature or, you know, philosophy and literature, there is always, there always seems to be an angle that you can take. And I think that's really freeing. Um, and in that way, it does open up other avenues for you to think about things in the future. So I think, like I said earlier, um, in final year, I had no idea that I was interested in psychoanalysis or psychology. I actually dropped psychology um, <laughs> during my A-levels. Uh, but then having that access to the course made me realise, oh, actually, I really, I really enjoy this. And that's what led me to, to study my master's. Uh, so I think having, the, I think my highlight was definitely being exposed to all of those things that I might not have usually come across. And I looked at, the other day I was having a big declutter of my room and I looked through my folders and saw how things changed in my writing and my, my viewpoints from first year to third year. And you just think, oh, you know, you go to uni, you just get a degree, but it's just, I think the department just did a great job in just explaining everything in different ways. And yeah, that was my highlight, I think. Thanks, Lucy, that's fantastic. And Sabiha, what about you? What were some of your highlights? So some of my highlights, I would say, were same thing, the variety that there was in the different courses that you could take. Like in my third year, I took one called Global Graphic Narratives and it was just seeing like pictured books and pictured novels and then comparing it to how else the novels were like. And when I first started, I was like, oh, maybe I'll do my dissertation on Shakespeare or something. But towards the end, I based it on like foreign literature and multiculturalism. And I think Queen Mary is really good for that kind of thing because you have so many diverse groups and they can help you when it comes to like doing opinions or writing a dissertation. And I've seen the way that I've developed in my writing throughout my years. And I'm really grateful to the English um, staff because they really did help me a lot. Even in my hardest and most depressing moments, they helped me so much to pull through. So thank you for that. Thank you, Sabiha, that's really lovely. Um, Leda, what about you? Uh, I think that one of the best things about um, studying at Queen Mary is the fact that teachers uh, and professors are also at the same time researching on the, um, on the subject they teach. And I think that's a really great opportunity because it, it means that they're really passionate about their work and they really help you a lot if, if uh, you're inter interested in the same subject or anything that is uh, similar to what they're researching. Um, I think they're, they're always, they've always been helpful and um, it, it's really great to uh, go to lectures and seminars and to be able to talk to them about something that um, you, you both share and you, you love so much. And I also think that um, societies are great at Queen Mary. Um, at the beginning of this year, um, a friend of, my, uh, of mine and, and I founded the Queen Mary Art Society and it's been a really great experience. Um, yes, I would agree with all of you as well that I think the variety of modules is one of the really great things. And you really are able to explore what you're interested in and what your passions are. And when you come to do your dissertation, there's so many different things that you've learned about and things that you've found that you're particularly interested in. And it's a really lovely opportunity to explore that further. Um, I wonder, Peter and Molly, would you like to just talk briefly about some of the subjects you teach? Uh, sure. Do you want me to start, Molly, or do you? Oh, yeah, start? please. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. I was just looking at later, actually, and remembering um, where I teach one of the um, uh, courses on modernism. That's kind of literature written 1900 to uh, 1980. Um, uh, and we, um, we, we, we had fun in one of the lectures this year. Um, we, we had a party because uh, parties are a big theme of modernism. Uh, later, um, 
I, I have a memory of you coming in a bowler hat and and um, yeah I was it, I had a, a really a really long yellow dress and a bowler hat yeah yeah I remember so the idea of the lecture was let's not just talk about parties and why they're so important to Mrs Dalloway or uh, in the wasteland or something um, but let's do it so we had a lecture that was a party um, and um, uh, we, we, we had food and we had and we, and we talked about parties and how awkward they can be and how amazing they can be and the, the kind of combination of needing to perform for an occasion and be interesting and attractive and how exhausting that all is um, and then you kind of tracking that into literature and um, the, the way that it appears not only in the way things are described but in the whole way the text works people coming in and out a bit like a party and I think that's one of my favorite things about Queen Mary is they let you experiment as a teacher. You don't just have to do boring um, lecture um, seminar every time. You can do trips, we do lots of trips out. Um, you can have lectures that are parties. Um, you can um, make people go to galleries. I, I, I really like the fact that it's, it's a kind of out and about kind of place um, and it using, using a lot of London's cultural resources. So yeah, that, that's one of the reasons that I, I continue to, to want to be here. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Peter. And Molly, do you want to talk a bit about some of your subjects? That you yes, do? of course. I mean, this always happens when I hear a colleague talk about the modules that they're running, that I wish that I was a student again, because, the, you know, the <laughs> idea of being, being in that modernist, um, I, I took modernism as an undergraduate, but we never had a party like that. So, um, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so I, as I said in, the, in my introduction, I, I work on the theory side of um, of literature. And so I run one of our first year modules, which is reading theory and interpretation. And um, I run the third year module that Lucy, I had as a student in and, um, and continue to run now, which is thinking about how psychoanalysis and literature um, can come into dialogue with one another. And I think one of my and, and all three of um, you have spoken about this, but one of the things that is wonderful is a way in which um, literature does not exist in a vacuum. So we try to think about how literature engages with the world in which it has uh, been produced and that it continues to engage with the, with the reader. Um, so for me, it's really important to think about, um, and you know, when we're in a classroom, we're also not in a vacuum. We, we are coming from uh, our own material reality. So I love um, thinking through the theory of, of um, literary studies and how we can better um, engage with the world through our own understanding of literature, through psychoanalysis, through, I, do, I also teach a philosophy course um, called Architects. So for me, that's, that's one of the most exciting things and to have students come in from their own positions and change the way in which I think about, um, you know, ways in which I've read, I've read Freud for now 25 something years and every time I teach that module, I see something different because of what students bring um, in that sense. So it's a real collaboration and um, I really love that part of it. Yeah. Thank you, Molly. Um, I really love that as well. And I think it's really interesting that when you're studying English literature, you're not just studying the typical authors of literary texts. You do get to delve into philosophy, mm. sociology um, and history as well. And it's so varied and you can really tailor the, the degree of what your interests are. Um, so Lucy and Sabiha, I just want to ask you a bit about how you feel that your degree helped you progress into your work, working lives where you are now. Can you talk a bit about that, please? Um, Lucy, do you want to go first? Sure. Um, yeah, that's, um, I think in terms of skills that I would maybe continue uh, using, I think it's definitely developed maybe any analytical skills. Um, and I find that I notice things that maybe I, I wouldn't have noticed before. Uh, and yeah, I think it's, I think mainly it's, it's looking at things from more than one perspective. I, and, and that's something that I would say fast tracked in final year. I think having so many different projects also makes you a bit more wary of your time and, you know, your organizational skills. So I think those are, are, would be the main three things. So developing it more of an, like an analytical eye, um, managing your time and being aware of different uh, perspectives. And that I really, I think that probably started in first year with, um, you know, looking at the plays and analyzing because we, we did Shakespeare in first year, which was lots of fun and um, carrying around an anthology that, that <laughs> thick definitely <laughs> makes you really make use of what you've got in front of you. And uh, yeah, I think those are the three main things on, on my end. Thank you, Lucy. And what about you, Sabiha? 
I think from my end, it's like similar to Lucy, where it's like one word can mean a thousand things. Like in RTI, when we did like Robinson Crusoe, best book ever, <laughs> best book ever, um, you could see the different interpretations. Like there wasn't just a colonial interpretation. There were other interpretations that act alongside that. And then as the year went on, you become more open-minded and more considerate towards what other people will think and what you think. So you may think your point is right, but someone else's point may also just be equally as right. And you kind of build that respect for that. On top of that, it did help me a lot with um, analyzing and going further in depth with like the meaning. Because um, as I said before, one word can mean a thousand things. And it's really interesting to see these different things just appear to you. And then when you share it among others, they'll look at you and they'll be like, oh, that's really intellectual. I didn't think about that. It just really makes you question everything. And I think that in our society and in our world today, that's really crucial to do. Thank you. Yeah, I remember being in seminars and where you were in small, quite small groups, it's really interesting to hear everybody else's theories and their interpretations of the text. Because it really expands the way you think about something that you've read alone um, to hear about what everybody else thinks and to then develop your own theories further. Um, so I'd like to talk about some of your favourite modules. So Leda, do you want to talk about what some of your favourite modules are, maybe now or that you've done so far in your degree? Yeah, that's actually a very difficult question, a question because I, I loved so many of my modules. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I think that in first year, um, Shakespeare was one of my favorites um, because Shakespeare and, and, and um, both his plays and poetry were um, one of the reasons that I, I loved English. I love English literature so much. Um, but studying them in Italy uh, was really, really different. And we, we only looked at the, at the plots and not much else. Um, so going into um, university and studying Shakespeare um, at that level was so much different. Um, we went to see plays and we also um, studied them and studied the critical analysis and um, as, as others have, have said so far, um, it was incredible to see how many different points of view uh, there were about even minor things or things that you would consider minor, um, but that actually aren't. And mm -hmm. um, something that I really uh, loved was the fact that from um, a single question or a single um, essay writing question, um, so many different essays different essay, essays could, um, could um, be written and uh, it, was, it was incredible. Thank you. And what about you, Lucy? Um, I think actually it was also Shakespeare first year. Um, I, I really enjoyed that. And I think also um, Dickens in the City was one of my favourites because he went on a walking tour and that was, that was so much fun. Um, and just, I just love that era. So having, you know, really thinking about the history alongside the text, I really enjoyed that. And yeah, there are so many that I enjoyed. It's hard to choose, but I think it, and also, of course, um, reading psychoanalysis, reading literature, <laughs> which I, I've mentioned a few times now. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I have to put those um, in my top. But I also enjoyed modernism as well. And then, oh, it's just too much, but I think <laughs> there are so many, but I think they, um, yeah, I, I enjoyed those mainly and literatures in time. Uh, that so I basically said all of them. But mm. um, but <laughs> uh, yeah, those are my main few. Thank you. And Sabiha, what were your favourite modules? There, there's so many to pick from because I remember first year. One of my favourite was actually poetry, um, because of the way we analysed it and the way the like the the lectures were so good but they still stick to me now. I remember once we had to present poetry and we had to act out and stuff like that. And I think that really stuck with me from first year. And then another module that I really loved was global graphic narratives because it was more like looking at the world and looking how literature affects the world, but through pictures. And I thought that was really interesting. And in my dissertation, I mentioned one of the novels that we studied and kind of how it, relates to like identity and stuff like that and it's like when you learn things like that you find yourself and how you are in contrast to literature and the world so mm. those were two that really stuck to me. Mm. Absolutely and I think as well the um, teaching at Queen Mary allows you to 
really explore your views and how you identify with the text that you read. Um, and me, I did my dissertation on mixed race identity in 21st century literature, because through some of the modules that I did, I realised how much it was important for me as a mixed race person to see myself in the text I was reading. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to explore that further. So I think that what you mentioned about identity is really, really key. Um, and I think that that's one of the interesting aspects of English where you're learning about so much more than just the texts. Mm. Um, so I'd like to talk a bit about uh, some of the things you really liked outside of your studies. So what were your favourite things about Queen Mary outside of the classroom? Um, Lucy, do you want to go first? Sure. Um, I went to a few drapers, um, <laughs> so monthly sports nights, which were fun. Um, I joined the uh, English Society, which I really enjoyed too. And in first year, I think I also joined the Fashion Society and also the Harry Potter Society. <laughs> it was quite funny. Um, uh, so those were for a few. And then obviously, as you get closer and closer to third year, you start to uh, spend increasingly more time in the library, uh, which I also enjoyed. Um, but yeah, I think it was a mixture of things. And I think on a personal personal note for me it's just at the start of, of first year it wasn't a very pleasant time for me and having you know something to somewhere to go where everybody was just so friendly and having um a course that you know really made you focus on the present moment and I think that was one of the points where when I was thinking of what to talk about today I you know I just thought focusing on the present moment is something that really helps because it's so easy to get overwhelmed uh, thinking too too far ahead or thinking too far behind or mm -hmm. and, I, and I just think what I enjoyed was just delving into things like joining the editorial team on the print having a balance you know between your studies and your hobbies and also you know but also not feeling like you have to do those things just because mm -hmm. you're a student and you should go out and you should I think a lot of that was just, um, a lot of my experience was just trying to take it all in, but not getting too stressed out about trying to take in the experience either. And it, I, I would say Queen Mary is an all-rounder because I was commuting and I, I, you know, was at home, but still having that campus ground and all these opportunities to get involved in was very um, beneficial for me. So, yeah. Yeah, I completely agree because I was commuting in my first year as well. And I think having a campus makes you feel like you're part of things, even if you're not living on campus. And that's a really big difference to if you were turning up to lectures in a site that was separate from everything else. Um, so Sabiha, what about you? What did you love most about Queen Mary outside of the classroom? Outside of the classroom, I'd say in first year, I joined a bit too many societies. So that is like whenever I went everywhere, they'll be like, oh, look, it's that girl. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I remember you and stuff like that. Is making new friends and um, also the opportunities that Queen Mary have provided me because because of Queen Mary I was able to do a semester abroad in Seoul National. I also met someone who also studied in Queen Mary but now teaches in Seoul National which was quite iron ironic and she says that she remembers all the English stuff and she loves them and she was just talking about how great it was mm -hmm. and it's nice to see that there's those international links from Queen Mary in other places and um, it was just making many friends and making many memories because when you're a student, you just want to live the student life. And at Queen Mary, compared to other universities and compared to what other students say, like my friends say about other universities, Queen Mary, I'm just grateful I went to Queen Mary because I got that experience and I was able to do so much thanks to everybody and everything. And I would also say that because in second year, once I returned, I went through a really dark phase, but the staff and the support from the English department really helped me pull through. And I was able to have that kind of close bond with the English department and stuff. And I think that's one thing I'll really treasure and one thing I'll always remember from outside the classroom kind of thing. I think it's really lovely that both of you touched on your connection with the staff at Queen Mary. Um, and yeah, it was the same for me. The teachers were just great. And it's so nice as well to see some of them now that I work with them. <laughs> so that's quite funny. Um, so Leda, what about you? What are your favourite things about Queen Mary? And, and you're living it now, so you can talk yeah. about more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I lived on campus in my first year. Um, and I think it was, it was really great because I, I was very scared of not making any friends or not uh, meeting anyone new. Um, 
and I didn't know anyone. So it would have meant that I, yeah, it, um, I was afraid it, it, it wouldn't uh, go as well as, as it could go. Um, but I, I'm, I met so many people and I think the societies are really great for that because you're able to meet um, other students from other departments that you, you wouldn't meet uh, otherwise. And it's great because you have something in common because of course you're um, in the same society. Uh, but at the same time, you also have uh, different um, ideas, different um, studies that you're you're taking. So it's it's pretty great. Um, and in my second year, um, as I as I mentioned before, um, I um, founded a society because um, at Queen Mary um, there hadn't been um, an art society for a few years. I think there was one. Um, a few years ago, but then it, it stopped um, running. Um, so at the beginning at, at the beginning of this year, um, a friend of mine uh, and I decided to um, start a new art society, and it was it was really difficult uh, because of course you had have to manage so many things with um, running events and organizing things. But it was it was one of the best things that I've done at Queen Mary because it, it gave me the possibility to really. Um, commit to something that I wanted to do and be able to give to other students the the possibility to uh, experience the same um, the same thing. That's really great and I think as well um, it's important that people know and realize that what you do at Queen Mary with societies can really impact what you do in the future so that events management that you've had as a result of starting the society will be really helpful for you when you're going into the working world because you might want to work in events and you can put that on your CV. So it's really good to have had that experience. Um, so Lucy, can you talk a bit about what you're doing now and what your interests and ambitions are outside of university? Sure. Um, so at the moment, I'm working in uh, educational publishing and uh, within the marketing division. So a huge part of the job is to um, just make sure that you know, teachers and schools have everything they need, especially, well, currently, especially during this time, mm -hmm. um, in terms of resources, and it's mainly more international curriculum, so it's, um, most of the work is outside of the UK, but uh, based here, and yeah, I think I, I kind of do a lot with the marketing materials, so brochures, posters, catalogues, uh, also sometimes events, uh, so that's that's my um that's mainly my role and that's for the caribbean and international curriculums and um i think my interests lie definitely in in publishing and also in psychology so at the moment i'm just seeing how i can maybe use those two um you know whether it's something that i do in my own time but i definitely enjoy um books <laughs> and <laughs> definitely I, I actually think at the moment more uh non-fiction so uh, I tend to go in and out of phases so that's me at the moment um and I can definitely see where I've applied things from English and from the course onto onto uh, the role and yeah that's me so far Thank you. And Sabiha, could, do you want to talk a bit about what you do and what your interests and ambitions are? Yeah, so once I graduated, I got into teaching. So I was teaching for a while as a teaching assistant and um, I was supposed to go to South Korea to start my job there. But because of the whole virus, it's been extended for another year. So I have another year in the UK. And whilst also doing that, I've been work, doing my own work as in making my own kind of fictional stories, as well as my own kind of graphic novels too, which have been going along pretty well. Some people have seen it and um, it's still in the process of being made, but after doing all of that and doing global graphic narratives, I think that impacted me severely in what kind of inspirations I have and aspirations I have. So traveling back and pretty much just teaching, I guess, and publishing my own work, hopefully. Mm. That sounds really interesting. Good luck with that. And I Thank hope you. that your working career is really enjoyable and that you get to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Rather than later. Um, Rupert just said that we've had some questions come in from the audience. So Rupert, do you want to um, let us know what these are? Hello. Hello again. Sorry to interrupt everyone. <laughs> 
But uh, yeah, I thought it was important if people are live online now, um, it'd be good to answer some of the things that they're asking. Uh, so one thing was, what was it? Um, let's just have a look. Uh, one was around um, accommodation and guarantee. So I can answer that one quickly. So we do guarantee accommodation now for first year students. So some of our panel may have been um, in accommodation, maybe they, they like to talk about that. Um, but yeah, basically, um, if you apply for um, accommodation by, it's usually the end of May of the year that you're hoping to start study, and um, we guarantee that um, you'll get a place if it, um, and you'll get an offer in July. So you just, um, you apply for that once you've applied to us by UCAS. Uh, one other thing, maybe for Peter or Molly, um, about, um, about, what is it about? GCSE results. Do we look at GCSE results? And sort of quickly answer and say, not really. It's more around A levels. Maybe you could talk about that. Yeah, it's um, a, it, it's a kind of useful second piece of information for us. Um, so obviously, A level results and predictions, or or, or IB or uh, BTEC or whatever, whatever, and what your cheap, your what the reference on your UCAS form says about you and your your personal statement. But just sometimes there are. Um, gaps in someone's history and strange things have happened in their life um, and um, sometimes those GCSE results can be really really helpful actually. It, 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 Molly would you agree with that? I agree with that and you know as you say sometimes uh, we need to look at the bigger picture of, of how someone got to where they were so I think that that's absolutely right that it's we can't use them as the basis for admission but we use them as a way of, of, um, of giving us contextual um, information alongside with the reference, the personal statement, and the A-level results, the predictions in that way. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that fits in with what was said earlier about uh, at Queen Mary, we are interested in your whole life. We don't ask you to check your background or your history or right. your gender or your, your family at the door. It will come into your reading because that's what texts do. Mm. And, and we kind of, we're interested in that kind of contextual stuff right from the start. Yeah. Ooh. That's, there's some great answers. There's more questions coming now. Just as we're coming towards the end of the session, <laughs> people are all coming out of the woodwork. So thank you for those questions. <laughs> and if we don't get time to answer them live on video, we'll get back to you um, via the online open day system. So don't worry about it. If you, if you don't get an answer now, uh, we will get back to you. Uh, one, one quick one that would be a good one for Sabiha while she's here is um, what do you gain from going on a year abroad? Did you do a year or a semester? Sabiha? So sadly I had to do a semester but now the English department have extended it to a year. Yeah. So going abroad, it just, it really helps you because it's like you're in a different environment so you have to adapt to that environment. So when I went mm -hmm. to South Korea, I saw the massive difference in the way they study. Like they're very studious people and then um, like the kind of ways that they do their essays is also quite different and I think what you gain from it is you get this kind of like it just broadens your horizons and you get this kind of international feel for English literature and it kind of just makes you dwell into the culture dwell into like how their society is like and I think that's really beneficial especially in the world today since we're very multicultural we're very linked with other aspects and that's how everything is so I think going abroad helped me a lot, especially when it came to my work in my dissertation. Mm. Oh, that's amazing. And um, thank you for the answer. And it's really exciting to hear about Korea as an option. Like, I wouldn't have even thought about that at university thinking, mm. wow, I could be in Seoul and like meet all these amazing Korean people. Um, so that's really exciting. Um, there's one question that's coming about creative writing. So just to say that we do a joint course, um, English with creative writing. It's about two thirds English, one third creative writing throughout. And um, someone's just asking whether they can take creative writing modules if they're taking a joint course with another subject that's not English. So it does get a little bit complicated. But basically, I think we're developing modules for the third year and second year that are creative writing that will be open to all. So yeah, that should be possible as part of your second and third year options. Um, and that's one thing to say that there are lots of options in your second and third year. Because sometimes choosing is quite tricky. But creative writing is really important to us and we do want to make sure that people get that option as much as they can. We've got a nice ice cream van going by <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> I think if everyone's here live with us now, like you'll know how hot it is in the UK. <laughs> it might be even hotter where you are. Um, one thing, um, someone just asked about BTEC. Uh, so is BTEC acceptable? I think we 
we do accept it and there's, um, there's uh, information on the entry requirements sections of our course pages. So you can get loads of detail about the qualifications that we look at. To be honest, like Peter said, we are looking for like individuals and like people who are interested in the subject. And there could be crossover around things like other humanities qualifications that you're studying. Um, but the best thing to do is get in touch with us, apply, come to things like this and ask us questions um, because we're pretty open and, and we obviously want to get as wide and kind of inclusive mix of people studying the course. It makes it more interesting for like Peter and Molly to teach people like mm -hmm. that, you know. Yeah. Uh, people from loads of different backgrounds. Cool. I think that's the last question, I think. So we might have to wrap up in a couple of minutes, but maybe Natalie, if you could um, wrap up. That would be yeah, I've just got one final question for our alumni, um, and that is just to say, what would your advice be to A-level students who are applying to study English at Queen Mary? Um, I'll start with Lucy, as I have been doing. <laughs> um, I think uh, what I would say, what if, if I could go back and tell myself something, it would be similar to what I mentioned earlier, which is just trying to be in the moment. And I think that's so difficult to do, especially when you're, you've got so many texts to read and you, you know, your module packs will tell you what's coming up in the next few weeks and what assignments are coming up. And while I think it's great to plan things, obviously you have to plan for things. I. I do think that, you know, just focusing on the task you're doing at the moment and setting some time for you um, alongside, you know, the academic side of things, just to be with your, be with your thoughts. You know, if there's anything bothering you, just, uh, you know, or stressing you out, just figure out if there's another way that you can approach it or maybe you're better off just taking some time off for, for the day and starting again tomorrow. So I think my advice would be, to just enjoy the experience without being too overwhelmed by the things that you think you should be doing and um, and just to take it day by day and enjoy it because you'll look back and, and want to be back. <laughs> so yeah, this, it's more general advice, but I think you can apply it to, to anything really, I, I would say. So good luck. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I'm on mute. <laughs> Thank you, Lucy. Sabina, what about you? I would say similar to Lucy in the aspect that don't be scared. I mean, it's daunting thinking about doing not only English, but just going to university. But don't be scared. Live each moment as it is because you won't get a second chance to do it. And with English in particular, I think you, you get that opportunity to not only just plan and focus based on the studies, but you can also have that free time to just enjoy. Do join societies, but not too many societies. Um, and yeah, university will make who you are today. It made me who I am and it opens your mind. So as Shakespeare correctly says, to be or not to be, that is the question. So it's down to you. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you, Sabiha. <laughs> Um, I want to impart some advice as well and I just want to say that there are so many opportunities at Queen Mary and at university in general um, and when you're a student you don't always realise that but as a lot of us have been saying when you look back you realise all of the things you wish you'd done so my advice would be to go to Freshers Week even if it's even if you're in your second year go to Freshers Week see what opportunities there are get involved with things and also just um, take advice from all of your teachers the career consultants tap into those opportunities around you because there are so many and it can really enrich your experience. Um, Leda, do you Thanks. want to share any advice to anybody? Yeah, I think um, it's something that I learned in my, to do in my second year and I, um, I didn't actually do in my first year, which was to um, really use the um, uh, drop-in hours that teachers have because uh, when you're really passionate about something and you've loved the lecture, uh, maybe you wish that there were another one on the same subject um, and there isn't. So I think that the best thing that you could do um, in that occasion would, would be to just go to, your, uh, to the teacher, to the lecturer and um, just have a conversation, ask for more, some more information and talk about what you think about the, the book or the novel or what you've been studying. Yeah. Thank you. I think we're going to have can to I wrap just, up there. <laughs> can I just bot in? Yeah, it's just the live stream's about to cut out. So 
all I just wanted to say quickly was um, thanks to everyone for attending. Thanks to our panel who've been all been amazing. Lucy, Sabiha, Leda, Molly and Peter and Natalie, of course, for hosting. She's been amazing. I also wanted to say that we're still taking questions by the online open day. So keep asking. We'll, we'll get back to you. Don't worry. Um, also, we'll do a follow up email so you can and I'll try and copy in Peter and Molly to that so they can um, help reply to some of the things that might be more complicated questions for me. Um, but yeah, just have a great day. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. Um, come to our taster session. We have one at 4 p.m. with Lucinda News, uh, which is uh, is around writing multicultural London. So um, we'll, we've sent around the Eventbrite link to you so you can sign up for that. But a big thank you, big round of applause to everyone and, and uh, for the panel and all your questions via live chat as well. Thanks everyone Thank and have a great day. Me. Bye everyone. Bye. 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 Well, live stream stop now. Mm. I need to, I'm really sorry, but I need to go straight on to a drama one. So yeah. I'll be gone, but <laughs> this meeting might we'll keep going. Sure. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Lucy, Thank so you. nice to see your face, yeah. Lucy. Thank you. Lucky yeah. to see you. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you're doing well. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I might end the meeting as I go. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.